Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Hartford Whalers throwback franchise mode here in NHL 22. So in last episode we took on the Ottawa Senators in the first round of the playoffs and we had a very good effort defensively. Also our depth scoring was pretty good and we managed to beat them in six games. As you can see the first two games we won both via shutout. Then we lost in overtime. They won 4-1, to one, which is another good defensive effort. We had our worst game defensively. We lost 6-3 to three in that one. Sean Burke started that game off really badly by comparison to his first five or four games. And then we won 5-2 to two in that last game to close out the series. And now we're taking on the Pittsburgh Penguins for the third straight season. This is the second year in a row that it's been in round two. But in year number one, we beat them in the first round. So it should be interesting to see who ends up winning the series and going to the conference finals. Winner will face either Washington or the North America Future Stars. But once again, I'll show you guys your lineup. It hasn't really changed that much since we played them last year. I think the main changes is that they're more of a physical fourth line now. You can see they still got obviously Nedved, Lemieux, Yager. Rick Tockett's dropping off, Ron Francis is dropping off. They did bring in Derek King from our team who we had last season. He's over there on their top six now. Um, I think their third line is pretty similar to what it was at, and they did bring in Louis DeBrusque and Dan Cordick, so two enforcers for that fourth line, make them a, a bit more of a, a physical team, I'd assume. Uh, defensively, they're also similar to last year, I think. They might have brought in UA Krupp. Yeah, they brought in UA Krupp in the offseason, so they did make their defensive core a little bit stronger. And goalie-wise, they have Barrasso and Markkinen because currently Patrick Lalim is out with an injury, and we do not know how long-term because it's pending evaluation, so... Hopefully we do not have to play him because if we do not have to play him, we have a better chance of winning because Barrasso was not really that good in the little bit he played in the playoffs in the first round, I think. Yeah, we allowed uh, one goal against in 22 minutes, but he still didn't really have that great of a save percentage. So we'll see if we're able to beat him since he's usually their backup. Once Patrick Lillian returns, though, he's been really good so far in this playoff run, so... We definitely want to uh, win while we have the chance to, because if he comes back, they're going to be a, definitely a tough team to beat. And yeah, they have a really good defensive depth, because Olison's scratched and Dallas is scratched as well. So, anyways, let's get into this first round matchup or second round matchup, my bad, and see if we could beat Marilyn Mew and Yarmer Yager, because like those two guys had 101 points on the season. Both of them should win the Art Ross this season too, which is kind of crazy. So. We'll see if we can actually beat that team because if we could contain their top line, I think we definitely have a shot. It's just going to be probably pretty tough considering they won 47 games in the regular season. So let's see what happens in round two. Game number one in Pittsburgh. Let's get a 1 nothing seriously here if we can. First period, 2 to 1 us. I will take that. It's a pretty good start. Stu Grimson scores again. That's weird. Because he doesn't score really at all during the regular season, but he's already got two goals in the playoffs, which is really weird. Andrew Castles made it 2 to nothing, and then Rick Tockett scores. So this one is probably going to be more of an offensive series, I feel like. Like, I don't think Sean Burke is going to be posting the same type of numbers he did in that first round, but you never know. Shots are 10 to 8 in favor of us, and we're up 2 to 1. Second period, still 2 to 1. I will take that. Good defensive period. Shots are 24 to 14. Sean Burke's playing pretty solid again. Can we lock down this game in the third period and take a 1-0 series lead? We've been a pretty good road team so far, so let's see what happens. Come on, boys. Penalty kill early in the third, and we killed off. Nicely done. Penalty kill again. And they score a power play goal, of course. Mary Lemieux scores. Not a surprise that he was going to score, though, because that top line is deadly. Come on, boys. Final five minutes. Are we going to overtime? Penalty kill again. Nicely done. There's been a lot of penalties in that third period, but we have a 2-2 game. We are going to overtime in game one. We've been in overtime one other time so far this playoff run, and we've lost that game, so hopefully we can win this one. Shots are 33-29 to in favor of us. Who wants to be the OT hero for us? Who do I want to say? Let's just say Stu Grimson will score the OT winner just for fun, since he's been actually scoring goals this playoff run, so let's see what happens. Come on, boys. Power play early into OT. We do not convert. That sucks. Our power play has not been good, but we do score right afterwards. It's Robert Schvela giving us a 1-0 series lead in uh, on the road, too, which is good. And we have a 1-0 series lead, which is really, really good. We just need to uh, make sure we can contain Lemieux and Log uh, Yager all game long. Like, they got one goal last game, but we can't let them have multiple goals or else we're going to lose this for sure. So Grimson from Shvela and Chase on Castles from Hull and then Shvela from Chase on. Nice. 
Our defensemen have been picking up some points as well, so that's good to see. So Svela gets first star, Burke the second star, and Lemieux the third. So another strong game from Sean Burke. Can't ask much more of what Sean Burke has been doing this postseason. Because last year he was off to a little bit of a rocky start. And then I think he picked it up and then we ended up losing. So, because, yeah, we lost in game seven last year, if I'm not mistaken, in the second round, right? So, okay, we have a 1 nothing series lead. Can we take a 2 nothing series lead on this tough Pittsburgh Penguins team? Not going to make any line changes. I'll just contain Lemieux and Yager and keep them to at least one goal, or at, at the most one goal, I should say. First period, 1 nothing Pittsburgh against Peter Nedved. So, once again, it's their top line, converting, not a surprise. That's probably their main drive of offense, unless Ron Francis is doing a lot of good stuff on that second line, I don't know. Shots are 9-8 to eight in favor of the Penguins. We are down by one goal after one. Can we tie this game up in the second period? Second period, still one nothing Penguins. Hmm. I mean, I like the defensive effort from our team right now, but we need to find a way to score another goal if we can. I just don't know who it is... Try, uh, who needs to start scoring a little bit more? Maybe somebody like Jeff Sanderson, because I think he only had one goal in this playoff run so far. He's had a lot of assists, but he hasn't scored really. So let's see what happens in this third period. Has it the third period? Yeah, it's the third period. Okay. Just had to make sure. Let's see if we could tie this game up. Hey, Kevin Stevens, the former Penguin, scores on Patrick Lalim. I guess his injury wasn't too long term. It's a 1 1 game now. Power play late in this game also, and we don't score on that one. So I guess the Leams injury was day-to-day, -day, which is unfortunate for us. But Castles makes it 2-1. That's a nice goal from Castles late. Can we lock it down? Yes, we can. Let's go. Another good defensive game. This team is looking really good defensively. And I mean, if we keep playing like this, we definitely have a chance of getting far. So another road win. Shots were 29 apiece. And we won 2-1 because of a late goal from Andrew Castles. And, yeah, that's really good to see, especially with Patrick Laleem returning from them. We managed to win a game. So, yeah, their top line has been converting, but it hasn't been converting too much, at least so far. So, Stevens from Castles and Castles from Kravchuk and Stevens. So, looks like that top line is still doing good, which is good to see. And Sean Burke gets first start of the game again, not a surprise. Castles the second star and Stevens the third. Wow, so we have a 2 nothing series lead again, just like last round. Another good defensive two games. Like, we've just been allowing a lot of goals, and Robert Corona is back from injury, which is huge. Maybe that could give us even more of a boost. Even though Grimson's been good, he's got to get taken out of the lineup, which means Robert Corona is back, and hopefully he can help us out even more so defensively. And, yeah, the rest of the team's going to say the same. Brett Hall has dropped down to an 87 now, which is kind of concerning, because I did sign him for a multi-year deal. Okay, so we have a 2-0 series lead, and we only made that one adjustment because Robert Krohn has returned from injury. Can we take a 3-0 stranglehold on the Penguins, or are we going to have a similar outcome to what we did in last round? Let's see what happens. Come on, boys. Let's win it again. First period of Game 3, and we're down 2-0. That's not good. Lemieux and Yager scores, of course. Those guys were a little bit quiet in the first two games. I mean, they had points in the first two games, but they didn't really score that much. And now they have the first two goals of this game. Shots are 12 to 9 in favor of Pittsburgh. We're down 2 0. Can we bounce back a bit in the second leg? At least get one goal to pull us within one. That'd be good. Second period. Hey, look at that. That's a lot better than I expected. Jeff Sanderson takes it to 2 1. Brett Holt ties the game up, and Brett Holt takes us to lead. So that offseason pickup and that free agent signing is crucial for this game so far. Shots are 22-17 in favor of us. We're up by one goal. Can we lock down this game in the third period and maybe get some insurance and see what happens? That was a really good second period. A lot better than I expected. Hey, and Jeff Sanderson scores again. It's 4-2. I did say he was struggling to score goals, and now he has two goals in this game. And it looks like we might have a 3-0 series lead on a very good team in Pittsburgh. So that's pretty impressive. And it looks like we're going to lock it down, I think, too. Yep, we lock it down and win 4-2, to two, another good defensive effort and a very solid offensive one. We outshot them 38-25 to 25 at an end of it, and we won 4-2. to two. And we are one win away from going to the conference finals for the first time, which is awesome. So Sanderson from O'Neill and Chason, Hull from Castles and Stevens, Hull from Castles and Deneen, and Sanderson from Deneen and Svela. So... One win away from the conference finals for the first time in this franchise mode. 
which is good. So Hull gets first turn, Sanderson the second, and Yager the third. Damn, Yager had seven hits. It's kind of unrealistic. But yeah, Sean Burke has still been very good in this playoff run. And then our offense has also been pretty solid in terms of depth scoring. So been pretty impressed with most players on this team, I'd say, for the most part. Okay, so we are one win away from the conference finals. We're only 10 minutes into this episode. This episode is going pretty quick. How's the other series looking right now? Toronto's up 2-1 on Vancouver. Detroit's up 2-1 on St. Louis. And Washington's up 2-1 on the Future Stars. Interesting. Stevens currently leading us with 10 points in 9 games. Hmm. Interesting. Can we sweep the Penguins? Can we do it? And get ourselves to that conference finals. That'd be awesome if we can. Is Brett Hall going to be the acquisition that could get us to that conference finals? Let's see what happens. And it's a home ice game as well, so that'd be really nice if we could win this one for our fans. Here we go. Game number four. See if we can sweep them. Come on, boys. First period. 2 nothing us. Let's go. Cronin's fail a score on the lean on six shots. So two goals on six shots. We're actually... Doing a lot better than I expected in this playoff run. Like, really good defensive periods, and also offense has been uh, kind of streaky at times. But I would say we are still scoring at, like at least three goals a game, which is really good. So shots are ten to six in favor of the Penguins. We're up two to nothing because the goals from Robert Cron and Robert Svela. So the two Roberts. Can we add to that, or can we just at least have a good defensive period again in the second second period? Still two nothing. Let's go. That's exactly what we needed. We have a two-goal lead going into the third. Shots are 21-19. We just got to play a solid 20 minutes, and we will find ourselves in the conference finals for the first time. Let's see what happens. Come on, boys. Just lock it down. Lock it down. Just don't let Lemieux and Yager get their team back in it, as we know how good they are. Hey, Jeff O'Neill makes it 3-0. That might be the dagger right there. Final few minutes. Yeah, it looks like we're going to the conference finals, guys. Let's go. Is it another shadow for Burke as well? Yes, it is. We are going to the conference finals, and Sean Burke gets his third shadow of this playoff run, which is unreal. Let's go. So, Karan from Emerson and Svela. Svela from Emerson and O'Neill from Karan and Wesley. Let's go. Sean Burke gets first star, 34 saves for the shutout. Karan, the second star, two points. And Svela, the third star, two points. But we have found ourselves in the conference finals after what has been a very good first two rounds for us. We are 8-2 so far this playoff run. Let's take a look at those player stats throughout the first two rounds. And then we'll see who we're facing in the conference finals, which Jay Shiger should be returning soon. And then we'll have to put Corey Hirsch on waivers. Well, I guess he doesn't go through waivers since it's the playoffs, but... Um, so Castle's point per game, really good from him, 10 points in 10 games. Primo's been kind of quiet, I'd say, 4 points in 10 games, but a plus 4 at least. Vanderville only one assist in 10 games, so kind of hoping that those type of guys kind of pick it up a little bit in that conference finals. Left wing-wise, Stevens' is point per game, Sanderson just under point per game, but he did start to score more goals in this last round. Uh, Stu Grimson got taken out of the lineup, but Kron has got 2 points in 2 games, and he's a plus 2, so he's been really solid. And then Arvidsson still nothing. Right wing wise, Brett Hull's just under point per game, 8 points in 10 games. Deneen's got 6 points, Emerson's got 5 points, O'Neill 5 points, and nothing from Rice. But in general, the four core solid depth scoring, but not a lot of offense, it looks like, from this team, but just really solid defense. Defensively, Shvela's got 8 points in 10 games, Chase has got 7, uh, Wesley's got 5, Malik and Kravchuk both have 2. And then nothing from Godinyuk and nothing from Bouchard. But Bouchard's been way better defensively than Godinyuk. He's a plus three in five games. So our defensive core has been rock solid. And goalie-wise so far, <laughs> Sean Burke is 8-1-1 one, one with three shouts and 952 save percentage and a 1.49. Unreal. Unreal. I don't know if Corey Hirsch is going to get a chance to play again just because Jay Shiger is going to be back soon. But uh, wow, what a performance from Sean Burke. Considering his first few years here in the playoffs, it's been kind of streaky. This year, he is on another level. Hopefully, he could continue that in the conference finals. Because if he does, we can find ourselves maybe in the Stanley Cup finals, which would be awesome. So, who are we going to be playing in the conference finals is the question. Is it going to be the Capitals? Because we have played the Capitals before in the first round. That was last season, I think. Let's see. It is going to be 
the North America future stars, so never mind. And JJ Guerra is back, so we are gonna have to send Corey Hirsch down to the minors, which is unfortunate, but we do got Jiggy back, which is nice because Jiggy was actually really good in the playoffs last year. So if Burke randomly plays bad for a few games, JJ Shiger could come back into the lineup. We'll just also take this and throw in Hirsch just in case the AHL team's in the playoffs, which I don't think they are, but there you go. Okay, so the future stars in the conference finals, we also got Vancouver and Detroit in the West, which is kind of interesting. Let's take a look at what these future stars look like, even though they finished 37, 31, 13, and 1. Like, they should not have made the playoffs, it looks like. I don't know how they made the playoffs. We'll have to take a look at that. So what do they look like? Because they obviously had a lot of good young players to start off with, and then they drafted probably pretty well. So top line, Mark Savard, Danny Briere, and JP Dumont. Pretty good top line. A lot of good young players, obviously. Matt Cullen as well. Zach Ferrelli, who they drafted. He generated guy, but he does pick up some points. Pretty solid player. Mark Parrish as well. Third line of Peter Schaefer, Eric Belanger, and Brent Gilchrist, who they must have signed. Then you have Jan Bulls, Joseph Branick, who they brought in, and Aaron Asham. So their bottom six is definitely really weak, and they also have Parrish as a second liner is weak. So I definitely think we could beat them based on that. But their defensive core, I could see why they were pretty good. They got Zidane Ochera, they got Derek Morse, Corey Sarich, Chris Phillips, Cedric Knighty, who they must have drafted as well, medium elite potential, and Brent Sopel, and a goaltending combination of Chris Osgood, who they must have brought in. And yeah, Osgood's a really good goaltender, so that's going to be really tough to beat him, probably. And they also have Brent Johnson as their backup. Depth-wise, they have Bryce Salvador and Ryan Wagner, who's just an AHL guy that I didn't even add to this franchise mode, so it doesn't really matter too much about him. So, overall-wise, I think we have a chance to beat them for sure, based on how they simulated in the regular season and whatnot. But let's see how they've been during the regular season and the playoffs, because I am curious on what their offensive levels and stuff are like. So, Eastern Conference will go by just because why not. Um, so, we finished with 95 points. They had 87 points. Um, we scored more, way more goals than they did. 34 more goals to be exact. Their defense was a tiny bit better than us, which is kind of a surprise, but maybe Chair is a really good lockdown defenseman. They allowed only two less goals. Um, their power play was a little bit better, and their penalty kill was a little bit worse by 0.1%. But they did score six shorthanded goals, which we scored none, so there's that. How about the playoff-wise so far? How is their team stats looking playoff-wise? Like, are they just a completely different team in the playoffs? Um, we are better offensively than they are by a little bit. We are worse defensively. They've been really... Actually, no, we've been really good defensively. They've been better offensively. Never mind, I got that confused for some reason. So they're a better offensive team in the playoffs by a little bit. Uh, or by quite a bit. Um, but they have played also three more games than us. We are way better defensively than they are. Only averaging 1.7 goals against per game. Our power play is way worse. And our penalty kill is a little bit worse. Hmm. Hopefully our power play could get going. Because I really want that to start scoring. Because if that could start scoring, then we could be unstoppable pretty much. But I think we should be able to beat them just because of how they finished this season and all that stuff. But it might be more even of a matchup than it looks. And then, yeah, winner will face either Detroit or Vancouver. And Detroit's probably a favorite to win a Stanley Cup this year. I don't know about Vancouver, but it uh, should be an interesting conference finals and Stanley Cup finals uh, as well this season. So anyways, let me know what you guys think down below, and I will see you guys next time.